Hello, this is Mr. Corsi, and today we're going to start off with a, an Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 workspace overview. Uh, we're going to learn about how to import files and the setup of Adobe Premiere Pro. First thing we're going to do is uh, you open up Adobe Premiere and you, we're going to start a new project. For every project you create, Adobe Premiere creates a project file. This file contains the settings you select for the project as well as the crucial data about the assets, edit decisions, and effects used in the project. Adobe Premiere Pro doesn't store video, audio, or still images files in the project file. It stores only a reference to each of these files based on its file name and location at the time you import it. It's much like a web page, an HTML file. The file doesn't contain the images but references and links to them so it's non-destructible. It doesn't actually harm the video files or change them up actually. It references them and then makes its own copy in the edit process. So when you start a new project uh, the main things you need to pay attention to are the location. Where, where do you want all the rendered files and files stored for this uh, project? Beforehand you need to cr think about that and create a folder to uh, get everything centrally located so it's easy to find and edit. Um, I'm storing mine on an external hard drive and I'm making a teaching video so I put it in there and I'm keeping mine in a folder called Premiere click choose and it shows it right there now for this lesson we're going to be working um, several videos on a project called pledge so I'm just going to call this project pledge now you might also pay attention to the uh, capture format the capture format controls how Adobe Premiere Pro transfers video and audio directly from a video deck or a camera the default options are DV and HDV, shown here. The other options appear only if you install specialized video capture hardware or software. Another thing is the scratch disk tab. That's where it makes the copy uh, from Adobe Premiere um, in the non-destructive process of referencing the videos that, and uh, images you capture. Now you can change it to same as project which is what I like to do because sometimes I'm working uh, moving the project around on different computers so I store them externally on an external hard drive so click OK and then the sequence presets pops up in the uh, sequence presets tab it allows you to create presets that match the project footage that you are inputting and uh, going to be editing. You can go ahead and choose that, but a little trick that I've always done is I just go ahead and press OK. Now you can even uh, name the sequence if you want. Click OK. The Adobe Premiere Pro workspace now appears. The main window of the Adobe Premiere Pro is the application window. Panels are organized in this window in an arrangement called a workspace. The default workspace contains groups of panels as well as panels that stand alone. Each one of these is a separated panel. Even after opening a new project and selecting project and sequence settings, you can make adjustments to several project preferences. These are located in the preferences dialog box. My uh, workspace probably looks a little bit different from yours. I've modified it to the, what makes me work more efficiently and more comfortably. It's very similar to the workspace for editing CS 5.5 and if you want to get yours similar to mine you just go window workspace editing CS 5.5. Now to start you need to have already created uh, your folder which I already did. Now since I created this project what it did was it created the project file pledge and then some preview file folders. Now in addition before you start 
the footage that I got was retrieved as external movie files and also on a tapeless uh, HD digital camera. Now, I've already uh, imported the video through Adobe Bridge, which another separate video showing that may be made. Now, in order to get the footage, I have already created folders with audio and a folder called footage. You want to keep your files organized where you're able to find them easy and it's not overcrowded where you can't find anything. So I'm going to go ahead and copy those two and paste them into my work folder. Now the easiest way you can import into Adobe Premiere is you could just simply drag it I can drag that whole folder. Now each folder in Adobe Premiere is called a bin. And each bin has the files that are needed. Now the other way, so I'm going to right click, import, or you can go file, import, and I'm going to choose that whole folder or you can select multiple files here or just choose the whole folder and click import. So you have three different ways of doing the same process. Do which one makes you more comfortable that's more efficient for you. The workspace is divided into frames, each of which contains one or more panels. You customize a workspace by arranging panels in the layout to best suit your working style. You can place them wherever you want just by release. You can even save your workspace or re reset it back. They can be resized, rearranged, um, added and removed, however you want. The project panel is the repository for links to project assets, which are video clips, audio files, graphics, still images, and sequences. That's where you're going to see all your files and clips that are referenced in your project file. The new item button allows you to create a new sequence that you can create for uh, nesting and creating new sequence in the timeline. You can also create uh, text titles, uh, scrolling, rolling, or just plain or decorated titles, among other things. You can also click on the new bin button and you create new bins. Uh, you can search and find clips or audio that you're looking for. You got different views, just the size, and that is buttons at the bottom of the project panel. The effect controls panel is when you click a clip or transition in the timeline panel, which is below where the sequence is held, its uh, properties are displayed in the effects control panel, such as You can apply and adjust video and audio effects in this panel. To do most of the editing in the effect controls panel and the timeline panel is done. So effects and timeline. The audio mixer, which is right here, you click on the audio mixer tab to the right of the effect controls tab to display the audio mixer. This interface looks a lot like audio production studio hardware with volume sliders and panning knobs. One set of controls for each audio track in the timeline plus the master track. Let's talk about monitors. Use the source monitor to view and trim your original footage. You can double click on any clip in the project panel to view what's in the source monitor. The program monitor to the right opens the clip in the source monitor. The program monitor shows video that has been placed in the timeline below in the source monitor. So it plays what's in the timeline over here. Use the program monitor to view your project in progress 
and to perform some video effect and sequence editing. Not to be confused with the effect controls panel, the effects panel is the repository of video and audio effects as well as transitions for video and audio and effect presets organized into bins. Let's talk about the timeline panel right here. You do most, most of your editing here. You create sequences in the timeline panel which are edited video segments or entire projects. One strength of sequences is that you can nest them which is place sequences and other sequences to break up the production into manageable chunks. You can layer composite video clips, images, graphics, and titles in up to 99 tracks. You can have up to 99 audio tracks in a sequence. Each panel has a panel menu in the top right. You can display by clicking on the triangle in the upper right corner of the panel to give you more options. If you ever lose a panel, you just have to go to Window and check to have it show back up or uncheck to make it disappear. Or if you remember the preset workspaces, you can reset and everything will go back as it was. I'm going to talk about the tools panel which is right over here. Each icon in this small panel represents a tool that performs a specific function. Typically a type of edit. One final trick I'm going to show you is how to play a sequence full screen by using cinema mode. And the way you do it in a Mac is pressing control plus and back tick. The back tick key shares the same space as the tilde on your keyboard in case you were wondering. What it'll do is you press the space bar and it plays the video. You can press J, K, and L, J to go backwards, K to pause, L to go forward. To get back into the regular screen, you just go control plus back tick again and it goes right back to the screen. A very helpful way of looking at your video and the best quality to assess if it's right.